So I mentioned the other day that um, I had a guest coming over from the mainland to come and hang out for a few days and he's finally arrived. Hello people. Say hello to Mark everybody. Hi. This is Mark Taylor from South Australia and um, he's come over here to discover what Tasmania's got to offer. Oh yes. So we're going to hang out at the lodge for a few days and do a bit of camping and go out and look for a bit of evidence. Yes, looking forward to it. And we've just come across some massive land degradation where the motorbikes come screaming through here on a weekend. But they've actually done us a favour in, in the process and created a nice soft fluffy bed for prints. So we've got a whole heap of footprints in here coming across. Got some um, roos here. Oh, Bennett's wallabies, paddy melons, rabbits. And there were some wombats up here. Which ones are the wombats, Mark? Stop here a little bit more. There's obviously a bit of a crossing here. Yeah, yeah, some great prints just here. No tiger prints or any candidates that may be. Oh, here we go. Is this them? This is the wombat ones here, I think. Yeah, going across here. Little short, stumpy legs. Do little tiny steps as they take their little steps going across. So, um,. Yeah, lots of nice, soft, fluffy sand to show up with what's been running around here in the last couple of days. So, probably a few devils and quolls amongst it too. Mm. And we will investigate them. We will. It's nice view up here. Well, Subi don't mind this track. Yeah. Good old Subi. Just jump. There's no branches down and we don't have to stop halfway up. <laughs> That'll be a bit hairy. <laughs> so I actually had cameras up here for a while, but to no avail. Okay. Yeah. There's a natural spring with really clean water just over here for okay. the tree ferns. Yeah, right. It comes off the mountain. King ferns in it, which are the ones that are still in South Australia up about Lofty. Oh, yeah. Big fat Tony and Barbara's yeah. massive fat trunks on a bubble tall. Shame they're just down here. Okay. Oh, stop. So these are those king ferns over here. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet water here. So you can camp up here. You've got access to sweet water. Oh wow. That clump of growth coming out of the top there, that's the crown. It's about wow. 1.2 meters wide. That's the actual trunk, that barrel underneath. Oh, shit. So it's a type of tree fern. It's a Todea barbara. Okay. Big valley. When you get up to a few rocks, you can see back over the top of Big Valley and there's massive granite, but it's a place to take the drone. Okay. It's the place. Oh, that is. There's be... so many big boulders and paths up there amongst them all. This is good water, unlike Ruby Creek, which is dead. Yeah. Things live in this, so it's not too bad. So it's a mixture of Sapphire Creek and Big Valley Creek. The Sapphire Creek's coming out from that way. Okay. Big Valley's coming out from that way, so there's a fork up here somewhere where the two meet. Ah. This one creek. But I've seen fish in here, so this <laughs> water's not too bad. Wow. 1969. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. 
So I'm here with Mark out at the beach and we've found a Bennett wallaby, Bennett's wallabies prints here where it's getting chased and a really big large five-toed beast is chasing it. So we've got our fifth digit here that's a uh, front right then we've got a rear foot with that twist the other rear foot then we've got the front left there's the fifth digit there front right fifth digit there you know like how much more obvious does it have to get when you've got these large five toed prints splayed toes long claws sausage like digits belting along in a beach in the middle of nowhere northeast Tasmania chasing a Bennett's wallaby here's another one with the fifth digit right here look at this he's a fresh he's only what, a day or two old from the last tide I'm not sure when the last high tide was which for Mark was but less than 48 hours old these prints probably tw less than 24 hours old look at this one I'm going to plaster cast some of these Mark's having a good time and we'll uh, see what we can come up with There's that nut right there. Yeah. That's going to snap off later. But we'll try and grab it anyway to show the full length of it. the ones you were... Yeah, I stuffed one of them up trying to build a mould around it. Oh, that's alright. I like this one. This one here. Too bad. You can see it's had rain on it. Yeah. Let's put some of that other gunk in there. Yeah, look at that. Be fragile. Mm. Because they're thin. I think this was the one with the right and left. That was good that you had Phil there that day when yeah. you were pouring plastic cups. <laughs> yeah.
It's double step there. Oh yeah. Back foot and there's the front foot. Mm. Get that. And last but not least this one. Would that be his back foot? Because it looks like there's two front feet up here. Yeah, hard to tell. We haven't got enough core anymore anyway. No, so that's alright. Look at that. Yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So here we have a large front right print. And we're going about 110 millimetres across. Maybe a little bit less, 100, 110. There's our fifth digit down there below the pad. This is this is a front right print. And 110 wide from the tip of the top there to the tip of the fifth digit is about 110 again. So they're almost square in dimensions. Mm. Our plaster went a bit screw riff over here on this one. That one's a well it's already set. Wow. <laughs> That's how bad that mix was. That's my fault. <laughs> Never mind. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you don't. Um, but yeah, we've got our two fronts here. Rear with the twist. So that would be the rear left. And that's the rear right there. And right alongside this um, Bennett's Wallaby here, come bounding up the beach. So it's pretty obvious what's going on. These ones here, I stuffed up trying to build a little reservoir around it so the plaster wouldn't run. I smudged it and I tried to patch it so we gave this one up. But that one wasn't too bad there. But yeah, it's gone up here and then done a right turn and chased the wallaby straight up the sand hill into the, into the uh, bush up there. So we'll get these set and hopefully we'll turn out all right. Okay, yeah, so here's one that we've dug out already from over there. As you can see, it's starting to take a bit of shape. And Mark is about to dig out his first plaster cast without breaking it. Got the taps. It's all good. Get right in under it, going deep under it without levering it. Okay. Had to get the most gigantic cuttlefish to dig out with. Couldn't use the little one that I use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your little one is better. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Just sort of dig in and, and gently lift it from the sides. Right, get right under it, push it under yep. directly towards it. Slide it. Oh, oh it. yeah. Oops. Voila. Okay, cool. Bit. Look at that claw drag there. Yeah. Look how deep that is. That's an inch deep, that claw. That one there. Sure is. That's awesome. Cool. See, it's broken off already, that little thing at the bottom, see? Oh, yeah. I told you. Well, but we can glue that on later with super yep. glue. No worries. Super glue works good on plaster. Cool. All right, let's get some more. Get this one out. You just sort of dig in and as you've dug down you just point in towards it and gently lever it from the wider side bit like where you're coming around to. Yeah, lever it from there. Look carefully. Real gingerly. Yeah, I don't want that one to... There you go. The tide's coming in. Yeah, we'll be right. Yeah. We've got to move on. This is the big deep one, isn't it? Yeah. This will be the best one. It will just seem huge. You can lift that, man. Just lift it up. Voila. Here they all are. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. And there's that little nut on the bottom of that one. The heel pad. A couple of rear ones, front ones, but the splay in the toes, the gaps. Yeah. The gaps between the digits. Look at that. There's no dog. No. That hands like a freaking giant possum. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, wow. we'll find out one day what leaves these prints when we film it leaving the prints. Yes. That was right. the dud, that one there. Yeah. That was the dud one where it went thick. But okay. we got three digits in the hill, so that's still good. Yeah. Here's your dermal ridging there. Oh, yeah, there's two. I'm going to try to load planter pad. It's got one planter pad. Yeah, that's right. With little ridge lines. Exactly. Get that at the bottom of that planter pad. And there's 1.5, right? Yep. There's 1.5. Yep. Oops. And that is. Three meters and five hundred and twenty millimeters. Three point five two. Three point five two. Three point five two meters. Yeah. Okay. So the gaps between the sets of four, did you say? Yeah. yeah. Is one point. Five, nine, two, twenty, one point five, one point six, one point seven two, one point seven two is five feet nine inches, roughly eight point five inches. Okay. From there. From the beginning of one set to the end of the last set. Yeah. Not the beginning of the last set, that's further. Yeah. So we're here together now, me and Mark, at the lodge. And we've got the spoils from yesterday's effort. When we went out the beach, you can brush them a bit harder than that. They're reasonably tough. Anyway, um, Mark's going to clean up some of the prints we cast. Look at the gaps between the totes. Amazing. Yeah, it's very wide. Yeah. This one's got the fifth digit just there. So just a little bit broke off there. So that's the fifth toe there where it's um I oh, don't worry about that bit, you'll lose it. Yeah. It'll just go. They've come up pretty good. Nice. Pass. All got the really splayed toes, every one of them. I mean, being on sand, that does accentuate that a little bit, but it was actually quite firm sand. It wasn't deep. There was only one or two deep prints. That one there's a deep one, where it was a bit softer, where it was heading towards the sand hill. Mm. But they're actually quite shallow because the sand was quite firm. So, just give it a blow. Just blow it off a bit. It's starting to look pretty good. Yeah. Bit of detail there. Decent size. It is. Well, it's got a bit more detail in it because it's a bit deeper. Yeah. Even though the plaster was going thick. Mm. That was that second to last one that you bought. Or the first one, I think. Was it the first one? Um, yeah, this has been the first one, I reckon. Yeah. So, having cleaned them all up, I might clean them all up. <laughs> but this one here seems to have the best detail as far as the fifth digit goes, right there, going out at a almost perpendicular right angle 
to the base of the planter pad which is lost in here a little bit. Animals have been on firm sand there and it's just kind of made a bit of an impression, not real deep. But um, there's another one here with the fifth toe just there. And um, we've got the good splay of the toes with all of them and the nice wide gaps between the digits because there's no webbing on the toes, especially that one, look at that. And that one. <laughs> well, here we are. Uh, Mark and I have uh, come out to do a touristy thing today, mm. and we're at St. Columba Falls, so Mark's about to soak in a few sights. Yes, looking forward to this. And this one is well worth soaking in. It's rather large. Come and have a look. Where are we going? Over there, bottom of that waterfall. It takes about 10 minutes to get down there, but once you get down there, you're right at the base of it. Sassafras gone and fallen over. A lot of money worth of timber in that tree. A lot of money in that tree. Big sassafras. What a shame. But that's nature. What are you doing? Sit down there. So here we are at St. Columba Falls. What a beautiful place. The must stop and see spot in northeast Tasmania when you're coming through this way. Absolutely beautiful. A lot of water comes through here. This is you know not even winter yet, we're still in autumn. Yeah. So on a big flood, you can imagine what it's like. What do you reckon? Sorry? Absolutely choice. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? Power of water. Amen to that. Ready to uh, see some old medals? I'm ready to rock. This is a cool little walk in here. There's a big one right at the entrance. But it gets better. Just bumming a ride. <laughs> this is the grandfather medal according to the sign. Seeing grandmother, this is grandfather. Wow. Video just doesn't quite do it justice, does it? <laughs> That's a big one. Not necessarily thousands of metres tall or anything, but just so big, the buttress on the root. Mm. Bloody 50 feet round or something. Would have been a mighty thud that was. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Big thumping. You can see our soil's made now. Hey, yeah. Fungus and trees. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get soil. That's how I... huh. Fungus just eats them. That's only come down recently. That wasn't 
Like that last time I was here. Not really. How's that? It missed a sign. Far out. So here we are. Laying down a scent trail with our nice smoky bachocky bacon hog. Taking the hawk for a walk. <laughs> Walking the hawk, <laughs> as we were singing before. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we're going to hang our hawk off this tree. We've got all this cleared area around it. We've got a bit of a rise over there by the car where we'll film from. And uh, yeah, she's plenty of room in here for things to run around so hopefully we'll go around this way we'll, we'll, we'll do a full swing around the perimeter and bring it into the middle and we've brushed fish, fish yeah. oil and oyster um, fish oyster. oil and oyster sauce to our boots just to lay a bit more scent down yeah. <laughs> so Jess is running around licking our footprints <laughs> Come here. What you doing? Okay. All right, so let's tie off here then. Bit higher. Boop. That's perfect. Done. Don't let me go on anywhere in a hurry. No. Possums won't reach it. The only thing that's really going to probably get that is crows. Yeah. Big devil might jump up and get it, or a little quoll. Mm. Quoll would definitely have a crack at it. There's a kookaburra. There's two kookaburras. They don't laugh a matter. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're here today just uh, setting up a cat trap. Um, out here we're at the 12.7. Um, the Gola camera. Oh, the live cam. The live cam. Yep. And um, we're out here just setting up this trap uh, just because uh, there's like a few feral cats around. And um, yeah, we just to see if we can uh, catch a few and move them on their way. Awesome. Go. Okay. So we'll just place this oyster oil leftover on the tin into Perfect. the trap. Look at that. One there, oh, yeah. that little one has to hook under. That's it, no, that's it, perfect. Okay, Done. beautiful. So um, we'll throw a bit of leaf litter in there at the entrance just to um, make it a bit more hospitable and welcoming. Alright. Okay. We can give, we'll just give it a spray down if you want. Give it a douse of eucalyptus oil to try and get rid of any of our smells. Good to go. Beautiful. It looks like we've caught a little quoll. Sorry you've been stuck in here, buddy. We'll get you out of there in a jiffy. So you can uh, be free. Good size. Yeah. That's an eastern quoll. It's an eastern quoll. Yep. Looks like he might have hurt his nose a little bit. We'll um, we'll get him out of there. Chudich, as they call him in WA. Quolls. Yeah. They're not beautiful. No, he's just eating all the uh, oyster oil. Awesome. Yeah, that's his choice. It's good to see him. There, you can say you've seen a quoll oh, in the flesh. Yeah, I've seen a quoll. But yeah, we'll, we'll uh, reset this after and see if we can't get that nasty feral cat that's been hanging around. There's a few of them actually that come through here, so we'll keep trying. 
He looks scared. He's holding his ground. Tough little bugger. Yeah, right, mate. We'll get out of your way. So you don't suffer any more shock than what you've already had.